Okay, second video on our uh, dual piece research. Um, once again, basically the same as we had in the last video, other than I have cleaned it up a little, shortened the wires, reduced our uh, wires as much as we can. Um, our 1.5 volt battery, I'm simply using this uh, quad cell battery holder and um, have the wire stuck in the spring there so as we can just use the uh, one battery. Um, of course our LED, our variable resistor instead of our 1k fixed resistor, our two scope probes, our light meter um, sitting above the light. And uh, what I will do is I'll take the battery out of the circuit for a minute. Put it down because the battery is fairly tight with that wire stuck in the back of the spring. And the reason I've done that is so you can see that um, the ambient light that the light meter is getting is not very much. So most of this that we'll be reading is coming from the LED. Um, it's only a 5 watt. LED light I have above us and of course that is on hitting the uh, back side of our light meter so most of what we are reading with our light meter is from the LED uh, we are set on uh, 10x on the lux meter um, so that part of it is ready to go we'll be able to see a change in light output quite easily with that meter as well as our scope Okay, our scope probes are placed on our uh, circuit as such. Common ground is on the emitter or negative side of the battery, same difference. Um, I've blocked that out because that was from a uh, different circuit test setup we had um, where I had the LED across the emitter and the base, um, which was uh, using the inductive kickback when the transistor opened to run the LED on L2 instead of L1 worked quite fine in fact probably more efficient than what this actually does here at the moment using the same inductor LED and transistor okay so um, channel 1 on the scope is across the LED probe on the positive side of the LED and um, the ground of course on the ground Channel 2 uh, is on the ground side as well for our ground lead and the scope probe is on the other side of L2 so we'll be looking, that trace, the blue trace on the scope is looking across the battery and L2 before our uh, 1k ohm variable resistor. I have a 10 ohm resistor on the base and um, that is so as we can have a look at the what happens to the current flowing into the base when we reduce our variable resistor here and reduce the um, resistance on that resistor that will be a little later on <coughs> so um, we know where our scope probes are hooked up uh, we have our light meter hooked up ready to go Pretty much it. Alright, so if we have a look at our scope, and I'll get tangled up in this cord. Channel 1, um, 2 volts per division, channel 2 set at 10 volts per division, and um, that is so we can reduce the size of this uh, spike across the base emitter when the transistor switches off. At the moment, you can see. 14.8 volts um, from emitter to base when the transistor switches off. This of course is uh, the spike we get on L1 when the transistor switches off that is running the LED. Um, the LED will start to conduct and show light at about 2.6 volts. Um, we are set at 2 volts division so it is only that top half there that is driving the LED. Um, 
we have 5.6 bolts max um, at that peak there across the LED at the moment which is way above its rated voltage um, but it is still alive um, and we have as I said before 14.8 volts uh, between the emitter and base we're now um, well, not the emitter and base, um, across L2 and uh, the negative side of the battery when the transistor switches off. So that is not the voltage on the base, sorry, that is the voltage across L2 and the battery during the off time. Here's our 14.8 volts. Alright, so what we want to look at um, is what happens when we reduce our base resistance. Now, um, in the setup that we want to do, we wouldn't be doing it just yet because our LED is already running pretty hard and the voltage isn't that low. Um, so as the voltage drops on the battery, of course our LED will get dimmer and the plan was to reduce the resistance on the base um, to increase the current flow um, into the base which also increases the current flowing through L2 um, which in turn creates a larger magnetic field because the L1's current is set when the transistor is switched on but L2, L2's current is not um, so as we increase the current flow through L2 we create a larger magnetic field um, with the two combined coils and um, that in turn gives us a larger inductive kickback and drives the LED harder which is what we want to do as the battery voltage is dropping to maintain light output. Um, so we, we can do it now even though the battery voltage is high you will see, um, we'll show you on the scope first I'm reducing the base resistance now and you can see channel 1's maximum voltage is climbing as it would you can also see the inductive kickback is um, gaining in voltage as well. It's now 17.6 volts, 18 volts, and now we're back at 1k. <coughs> um, and we can watch this on the light meter as well as I reduce the base resistance our light output does indeed go up even though I've turned it back up to 1k again uh, so we've got about 207 so even though as I reduce the base resistance our battery voltage goes down our light output still goes up So we're probably at about uh, 600 ohms of base resistance now. And as you can see we have 6.56 is our maximum voltage across that LED. And um, between the base and emitter um, voltage, or the, uh, sorry, the voltage across L2 and the battery during the off time is now 19.2 volts on the negative side. So once again we turn it back up to the full 1k our light output drops and our battery voltage goes back up a little bit of recovery there. Um, <clears throat> the inductive kickback side on L2 has dropped and our maximum voltage across the LED has also dropped along with the uh, width of the on-time as you can see here it's going down in base resistance and now it's back up to the 1k
So that's the deal there. Oh, well, we just turned off again. Oh, we got it that time. <coughs> um, so it does indeed work the way we want it to work. But we wouldn't do it like this, like I said before, as the battery voltage, you know, depleted battery slowly drops, we would slowly decrease the resistance on the base um, to maintain a light output. There is also another advantage of this, and um, having the uh, variable resistance over the fixed resistance, and we'll have a look at that um, very shortly. But uh, next we're going to uh, switch the camera off, I'm going to change um, our probes around and we're going to have a look at the current flowing into the base as we reduce the resistance. Uh, that would be just further confirmation that the current flowing through L2 is becoming greater and um, it is that current flow through L2 that we are increasing that it increases the light output because the combined magnetic fields of L1 and L2 um, are increasing which gives us a better inductive kickback so um, I'll be back shortly, I'll swap these uh, probes around and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the current flowing into the base as we drop the resistance okay so we now have our probe hooked across the 10 ohm resistor that is um, in series with our 1k pot or in between our 1k pot and our base so we can have a look at the current flowing into the base as we adjust the pot um, so we'll do that test and uh, then I'll show you a, uh, another advantage of being able to uh, lower the resistance as your battery voltage drops um, and then we'll change the circuit around a bit more. We'll take this large LED here, uh, multi LED out of the torch, and we're going to place it across this um, spare winding I have on here. Um, so, as this LED also is uh, driven by the inductive kickback spike um, created across that third winding when the transistor opens. Uh, and we'll take um, both voltage and and uh, light meter measurements off of this LED and we know that the only way to increase the light output um, through a transformer winding is by increasing the current that flows through that transformer and um, that in turn creates a larger magnetic field which gives us a larger inductive kickback spike and more current flowing through this LED to make it run brighter. This all has to do with the so-called VR limit of the battery and um, apparently if we uh, draw more current the voltage will drop and the outcome will not change because the actual power flowing into the inductor remains the same. Well, that's not the case as we will see and we have already seen but we'll keep on going. Make it donkey proof. Anyway, back to this. Um, right, so we're going to have a look across our 10 ohm CVR that's on the base. We are set at the full 1k at the moment. Um, as we can see we have 44.8 millivolts roughly across that um, 10 ohm CVR, which will mean a current of about 4.4 milliamps at the moment that is flowing into the base. Okay, so I'm going to wind the pot down now and we can watch the waveform and also the voltage across our CVR. Okay, there I'm about halfway around on the pot, as you can see there. So we're about 500 ohms. We've reduced our base resistance by about 500 ohms, roughly. Um, so now we have about 7.6 milliamps of current flowing into the base, and you can quite easily see that on 
or scope trace that it increased quite largely. Uh, the other thing that means that we also increase the current flowing through L2 by the same amount. So, um, and that results in a larger magnetic field across our uh, inductor as a whole. Which is why we get the higher light output. So I'll drop it back down to 1K. We'll lift it back up to 1K. And you can clearly see the difference. Decreasing increasing <coughs> and you can see the light output go up accordingly even though yeah, switch off. Even though when we get more light output and increase the current, the voltage does indeed drop. If I lift it back to the 1K, you can see our voltage recovers. So even though our voltage is dropping, our current is increasing, um, which more than compensates for the voltage drop. So the VR limit. Um, is not applicable and it doesn't quite work as per se the books it should and there was some rubbish about Kirchhoff's law chucked in there somewhere but nonetheless that is reality okay so um, next I'm going to hook this, um, remove the battery and I'm going to uh, use our power supply and uh, in the next test we're going to leave it at the 1K which would be your set resistance in the standard dual phase circuit we will keep dropping the voltage down I will limit the current on my power supply to 100 milliamps um, which will imitate um, the available current from the battery and we will see an according voltage drop once we reach that current limit however we will still see um, our light output change and we'll also drop down the voltage until such time as our circuit stops with our fixed 1k I'll then drop this down to about 500 ohms of base resistance and we will see if we can get the voltage to drop lower and still have the circuit running. Um, what this would also mean is we can drain even more of the remaining energy from our battery than we could with a standard dual phase circuit. So I'll be back shortly. In actual fact what I've decided to do is um, I'm going to leave our um, power supply voltage uh, reduction test um, until the next video and also our um, LED on our third winding um, to see how that goes until our next video otherwise it's just going to be too long so um, I'll probably get that one done tomorrow night but um, I'll go and put all this one together now and get it uploaded it's already going to take long enough and um, then in the next video we'll come back and do those uh, other two tests alright thanks for watching guys and um, until then have a good night Bye for me.